Hola a todos, buenos días, bienvenidos al último día de actividades de Encuentro Creativo. Muchas gracias por habernos acompañado a lo largo de estas dos semanas y esperamos que hayan disfrutado todas las actividades que realizamos para ustedes. Um, esta sesión será llevada en colaboración con Domus Academy, una de las nueve universidades participantes de esta segunda edición. Eh, bueno, antes de comenzar con eh, la ponente, vamos a proyectarles un video de uno de nuestros partners, Class Education. Ok, en unos, minutos, en unos segundos más proyectaremos el video. Hola, soy Vanessa Guillermo, consultora educativa de Class Education. Nos dedicamos al turismo educativo internacional. En esta ocasión les voy a platicar de uno de nuestros destinos más populares que es Italia, en el cual contamos diferentes programas como son idiomas, campamentos, entre otros. Manejamos diferentes destinos como es Florencia, Milán, Trieste, Tropez, en fin, tenemos un abanico de opciones muy bueno para ti. Por eso te invito a que agendes una asesoría virtual conmigo para poder platicar más a detalle en relación al programa, destino, fecha de viaje y presupuesto. Será un placer apoyarte en este proyecto y concretar tu sueño. Vanessa Guillermo, Class Education. Bueno, pues en nombre de la Cámara de Comercio Italiana en México, les agradecemos por haber formado parte de la segunda edición de Encuentro Creativo, el cual es un proyecto de la Cámara de Comercio Italiana en México en colaboración con la Embajada de Italia en México eh, nueve universidades partner en Italia, incluyendo Adomus Academy y muchas otras marcas más de la excelencia de Made in Italy. Ahora, bueno, para concluir este último día de actividades, compartiremos un video de nuestro presidente Lorenzo Vianello y la directora de la Cámara, Fariba Gallar. Hola a todos. Es un gusto para nosotros en la Cámara de Comercio Italiano en México estar promoviendo la segunda edición de Encuentro Creativo, un evento que ha incentivado que los alumnos mexicanos consideren a Italia como el lugar ideal para la especialización en diseño y artes creativas. Gracias por haber sido parte de Encuentro Creativo, un evento organizado por la Cámara Italiana y la Embajada de Italia. Muchísimas gracias a todos nuestros patrocinadores y sobre todo a las universidades italianas que hicieron posible este evento. Espero que hayamos despertado en ti la intención de viajar a Italia y vivir una experiencia multicultural y académica. Muchísimas gracias, a la próxima y arrivederci. Pues bueno, la actividad del día de hoy será presentada por Elisa Kiodo, líder de programa del Máster en Visual Brand Design y Business Design en Domus Academy. Les voy a leer un poco de la universidad y de la experiencia de Elisa. Uh, Domus Academy es una incubadora de talentos y un trampolín hacia aventuras interdisciplinarias. Ofrece cursos de posgrado en una amplia variedad de especializaciones en diseño. Cuenta con un enfoque meticuloso, riguroso y sólido que combina con su visión creativa. Y bueno, por su parte, Elisa es diseñadora en comunicación y estratega de marca con una experiencia que abarca desde proyectos con agencias hasta la docencia y la investigación académica, además de contar con un doctorado en diseño. Después de graduarse en diseño de comunicación, recibió el doctorado cum laude en 2013 en la Escuela de Diseño en el Politécnico de Milán. Durante sus prácticas de doctorado, tuvo la oportunidad de trabajar en el Centro de Investigación Mobile Life, centrado principalmente en el diseño de servicios e interacción para dispositivos móviles en la Universidad de Estocolmo y en el Mental Lab de la Universidad de Harvard en el campo de las, de las humanidades digitales. Presentó resultados didácticos de investigación en varias conferencias y publicaciones alrededor del mundo. Durante más de ocho años ha colaborado con el curso del Máster en Diseño de Comunicación en el Politécnico de Milán. Sus intereses se centran en el diseño de sistemas y en lenguajes multimedia innovadores capaces de atraer a los usuarios. Esta sesión se llevará a cabo en inglés. Al final de la sesión dejaremos unos minutos para que hagan sus preguntas a la ponente. Uh, thank you so much, Elisa, for being here with us. Uh, you can start with the presentation. 
Hi, thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. And um, I'm really glad to be here together uh, with you this afternoon here in Italy. I'm um, doing my lecture directly from Domus Academy uh, after my student presentation. Now I'm sharing my screen with you. I hope that you can see perfectly. And uh, so, as you can see directly from the title of this presentation, we will talk about responsibility. Responsibility, of course, is an important topic for us as a designers. And uh, at Domus, since we work with students that come from all the part of the world and uh, which all kind of backgrounds and uh, with different disciplines. So we are trying to do our best to represent not only what we face in everyday life in terms of problem solving, but also in thinking about the future, so problem setting. In the last week, I was together with my students thinking about these topics. And one of my students say, I'm reading this book that I also had read in the past and said that is really interesting think about the uh, things are changing right now. This is a quote of the, this book uh, in which tells that before we were like other animals, no? Insignificant, but today we are the only human species left, homo sapiens. And so we rule this planet, but uh, there is something that needs to change. And sometimes uh, together with one, my students, when we think about future scenario, we think, what if we can um, set up a new problem or try to solve it in a completely different way. We pass our thinking about what is the future of human beings? Uh, this last year were not easy at all for us, but we are trying to face it with a new uh, design, with a new invention, with innovation. And right now that we are back all together in the school and we are doing a session of design thinking and session of ideation all together and design new project, we want to try to give our best with responsibility. This this is a um, cloud that we have done from a design thinking session together with other professors that are uh, guiding our students during this year also through thesis. And as you can see from the theme of responsibility, we are trying to understand sub themes like environmental culture. So more and more thinking about how our planet in terms of real approach, like uh, slow movement, uh, or for example, material ecology that is for sure is completely related to design and um, ethical practice. So we are talking about social responsibility or democratization. And so here you can see all the topics that are around and are everyday life real topics. I want to start with this picture because we had an exhibit of uh, this uh, particular photographer really famous here in Italy in uh, the last um, months uh, in um, Piazza Duomo in the center of Milano and it's a strong message and uh, it talks about uh, diversity of course inclusion and this is uh, Oliviero Toscani that is I think a strong representative of the culture of project in Italy and um, he don't do we can say only advertising, but he want to send a message in the past for sure. Everybody knows it for his collaboration together with uh, Benetton, that is a brand, uh, a famous Italian brand for sure. But any time that we think about the work that we have done together with Benetton, we don't think about the product. We don't think about uh, dress, shirt, um, but we think about the message. This was a campaign of him, of course, regarding inclusivity. So United Colors of Benetton, you can see from the payoff, but also regarding diversity. And he went through uh, alimenting huge discussion around the world for, of course, uh, this campaign uh, that <laughs> regarding the ethic value like uh, this one or like that one, probably you can recognize Isabel Caro, that decided to work together with him for an important campaign uh, during the fashion uh, week, uh, talking about what there is behind this world. And so a completely new way of talking about uh, not, we can say, only a brand, 
a product, but uh, what makes the difference, okay? So there is an attitude. So leaving a message. And this is what now a lot of love brand is doing. Uh, you can see another work of him for, of course, families and new kind of families, but not only the work of Oliviero Toscani. Uh, I'm picking a famous example that comes from any kind of uh, not only visual design or branding design, but this is an example that comes uh, from Apple for sure. And you can recognize uh, the logo of 1977 of Rob Yanoff. And of course, uh, the uh, logos, uh, they change colors. Uh, that's uh, talking about innovation, creativity, inclusion, no rules. That was together with the campaign um, of the beginning of 2000 that was think different. With this campaign, another time, we are not selling laptop, we are not selling iPhone, we are selling something different. So that we are part of a community of thinkers that really had made a revolution. I think that everybody knows this campaign, but this is the manifesto. Here to the crazy one, the rebels, the troublemakers, the one who sees things differently. While some may they seem as a crazy ones, we see genius because the people who are crazy enough to think that they can change the world are the ones who do. So this is the manifesto. And of course you can recognize uh, a lot of thinkers that have done real revolution in their disciplines. And uh, of course, Alfred Hitchcock, Bob Dylan, Martin Luther King, and what Apple want to say that also you, can be part of this community. So another way of leading a message and design emotional connection. So there is any more um, a design that is uh, um, from one sense, okay? It's a dialogue, it's a real dialogue that you make with your auditors. Another love brand, of course, you can recognize the Nike and you can recognize this campaign with Colin Kaepernick that uh, what this, he took a knee during the national anthems. And of course, for protest for racial injustice and police brutality in US. And the payoff of this campaign that comes of the most famous payoff, just do it, of Nike says, believe in something, even it means sacrifice everything. Probably you know that after this protest, he loses his contract, he can't play anymore, but he becomes the ambassador of this message. So another time we can see here a lot of brands that take this position, okay? So this is a sort of responsibility. And sometimes we say, okay, but it's done for good design, it's done for marketing purpose, but the message is clear. This is another campaign that personally I love. Uh, she's the fearless girl in New York in front of the charging bulls. Uh, this was uh, uh, an opera from uh, 2017 done by Kristen Bisbal uh, from, uh, I remember the State Street uh, Global uh, Advertising and what is took. It's talking about gender inequality in working uh, environment. We can see this little fearless girl in front of the bull of Wall Street that represent, of course, financial, but of course, also the environment. So the working environment. We remember that we took for sure a photo with the bull if we have been in, um, in uh, Wall Street in New York. But right now there are a lot of people, they take the photo with her in her position. So even with an advertising campaign, with an opera, we can really mix the difference and uh, say something that uh, give, a, give a different message to people. This is a pretty new campaign done by um, an agency from Milano that uh, is uh, We Are Social and done together with IKEA and done with IMPA. That is association for uh, about um, uh, pets. So what we see here, we see Ugo and say that you can adapt him. They use the catalog of Ikea, uh, of course, showing the object, everybody knew the catalog, but this is the digital catalog that is updated every day. And of course, uh, you can uh, um, bring in your fam family, so enlarge your family, uh, asking Hugo or the cat to 
come. But let's see this uh, wonderful campaign. So the hashtag of this campaign say, we are, let's do a real change. So a new beginning for you and a new beginning for them. So another time, yes, there is a brand, there is IKEA brand, yes, there is association, yes, there is a creativity of an agency that want to talk about uh, a real important teams. So uh, this is another campaign. Uh, of course, of IKEA and ABB, the state minds of change and was about sustainability. And here another time we are talking about environment and we see IKEA and here we see the name of researcher. So uh, in the agri-tech uh, culture and sector, uh, molecular researcher and so on. And what IKEA has done for them is helping, uh, giving them space, customized space, also with sustainable material in order to uh, improve uh, and develop their research. So more and more brands that are becoming part into and that are really change uh, what they are doing, uh, not only from the end, from the communication campaign, but also from their business model since from the beginning, more, uh, most of them also becoming B Corp. So it's important the connection with the context and the connection with the people. And I want to start from this picture, talking about the project of my students. I will present four projects of my students that talk about responsibility in a different way. This is a beach of Vasto in Abruzzo. And this is a picture done from one of my friends from doctoral studies. They took a picture there during uh, the sea. And this is a, a natural area in Vasto in Abruzzo in the south of Italy. And you can see that there are a lot of plastic trash. Another time we ask what if, what is the future of human being? And so we start this uh, project, uh, Souvenir da Mare, Souvenirs from the Sea, but also it's uh, a play of word in Italy that say Souvenir to be loved. And there are 15 stories recovered from the sea. My friends come in uh, Domus Academy and show her treasure. There are little objects and she create a photographic archive of this plastic object funded on the beach with uh, her son and show to my students. You can see here this little object and uh, we decide together to give one of these objects for one of my students. From And uh, starting from this project, significant object, we told to our students that they have to create a strong storytelling in order to engage uh, families, kids, uh, but not only to talk about sustainability, recycling and upcycling. And so from this object, these are the archive of my friends, Angela Ponsini and Souvenir da Mare. And so they start to create little book. Here you can see my students from all the part of the world, US, Germany, Thailand. And of course, the professor that work together with them, photographer, illustrators, um, but also strategists and brand strategists. And here you can see the object, the cover of the final booklet, and they create um, everything with recycling paper. And also here you can see what they have created, the little story, the illustration. And this is an example of the plastic cowboy and find it on the beach and then uh, his journey into the sea. And at the end, uh, what is going on? And of course, all the story done by Benedict. This, um, this project um, has become uh, 
pretty famous here in Italy because it's won the Gilded Plastic Prize uh, from Rosanna Orlandi, become one of the finalists, was exhibited in the Science and Technology Museum uh, in Milano. And here you can see during the exhibition and of course uh, presented also. And you can see here Angela with the archive and also presented for kids. You can see here in her direct in this video all the little trash um, that she found uh, on the beach of Basto. So another time a project that starts from the real world, that starts from trash and become creativity and design object. This is another project done by my students. This is a project that we have done together with an agency, a famous agency, DDB, and uh, uh, with uh, uh, responsibility and talking about plastic. Here you can see my student that she's presenting uh, during the design week here in Milano in Rossana Orlandi space uh, because they won the special mention as innovative education by social media. This project name is Tick It Up. And uh, here is the exhibition in, um, during the design week done everything with plastic and recycling material. Tick it up, protect what you love. So it's about a tiki bar track and it's about a summer campaign, communication campaign. The students here come from any kind of background. We have a business student together with visual students and interaction and service students. And they start from recycling masks because they have seen a lot of them in the seaside. And uh, they decide to talk about this in a fun and cool way, uh, starting a new campaign of event uh, in Italy, in the near the beach of Italy. You can see here Rimini, Genova, Alghero, Cefalù and Brindisi. And you can see famous influencer that can talk about uh, uh, the, the several uh, action and uh, what they have to do in order to reach this event. So what's happened is that, of course, that they create uh, this promotional campaign and also they start to talk about uh, this event and what is going on. So you will reach the, uh, by Instagram uh, by an education, educational campaign by this influencer about upcycling, recycling, and what will happen during the event. What will happen? That for sure you can use your surgical mask in order to pay food, cocktails and you can bring your mask from home or also take it from the beach and use really like a money back. So here uh, this is uh, uh, an example of what will going on. So here you can see people enjoying, uh, be part of this uh, um, party on the beach and you can have any kind of special sales. Of course all these projects have a strategic uh, part. They start understanding from a research uh, how to do that. They start to understand the target and the persona, the feasibility. They arrive to a definition point. They present the concept to the company and uh, to the agency, and then they do the design. Here, of course, we see only few slides of this project, but at best represent their idea. And see, you can see the track, the party, and the kit, the playlist that pro give the promotional campaign, and the claim, the payoff, and of course, another time, responsibility. Protect what do you love. So here we are talking about another time, our environment. And here you can see the filters during the party that you can use to share your contact. And the most important thing, to clean the beaches and recycling the surgical mask. And of course, uh, take it seriously while having fun. So the tone of voice uh, exactly for the target and for the people. I want to say people more than target. Then another project, they want to talk at different water, no more sea, but the luxury of water. And this was done together with uh, an agency that is a kickway, the global agency, and ActionAid, um, that is an association for helping people. This campaign name was Check the Real Price. Another time we are talking about um, 
how to deal with important themes like the water footprints and the total volume of fresh water consumed or polluted producing goods. Here you can see the liters. And there are 2000 liters of water to make this t-shirt. Starting from this insight, uh, the students start to want to talk about creating a storytelling of what is going on on the Southern Hemisphere, that there are people that are doing six kilometers for having water, and uh, we are using water every day really a lot, and they want to talk about the price and the real price of water, the real cost, and they have to find a strong way. They're thinking about a campaign with the pop-up store, also during the design week in uh, some hotspot here in Milano, like uh, here in, during the Fuori Salone in Brera or Tortona. And you can see this pop up with this white t-shirt with this check the real price. And you can go there on a white t-shirt and see that the real cost is 150 euro. And there is the storytelling behind of it. You can see also the campaign and they explain and make you think, they make you open your eyes. And for the first time, I uh, think how in the two completely different parts of our globe, the things are different. And another time, this is an awareness campaign. You can go there, check the real price, uh, and of course, uh, be in contact with ActionAid. And if you buy the t-shirt, of course, you will donate to them for helping uh, and people to reach water in this part and in this country. And you say the campaign and uh, you say the activation and how to make the people really engage with an important teams. Here you can see also the structure of this pop-up store, the Antwerp fashion, but also in the future, why not for grocery, for food, for a campaign, check the real price of all the products of our everyday life. And also here, you can see all the touch point of the promotional campaign. This is important because as a strong concept, simple execution and a wow effect and uh, several touch points. And uh, we can say an hybrid on the channel engagement offline and online. The last project that I want to present to you is from my business student. Um, and this is Matthew. And uh, it's done together with Kickstarter. Kickstarter is a famous platform, uh, UK platform, that work on crowdfunding. This was the brief. Um, so to become entrepreneurs and design a startup around meaningful product for a defined community, so a particular community, create a compound launch and a quick starter design category. What is a quick starter? So the easy object, easy to produce, easy to um, in terms of cost of production and easy in terms of design. So this is really challenge and with no technology. So we asked them to thinking about all the design process also following with the double diamond approach. So from uh, the design uh, uh, research and analysis arriving to the de inside definition, jumping into the main ideation, designing them, uh, thinking about the business model and presenting with a strong pitch to Kickstarter. So they think about the community and they pick the conscious parents uh, that want to educate their son uh, and think about the feelings, think about real values uh, and think about, of course, uh, a new kind uh, of uh, uh, games. Uh, so they need to be engaged with a proposed their children, with an ethic proposal, thinking about also circular lifestyle. And so we have to really to think something innovative. And they take a look in the, like with a positioning map in the design toys and kid industry. And you can see here where they want to go. So something that is material and is an environmental friendly. They start to think about the piggy bank. Why that? Because it's famous, everybody knows it. And also since the group was done by the students that come from Italy, one that come from India and others that come from Mongolia, they want to create something completely new uh, from the uh, kids thinking about the value of money, planning, educate to planning and save up money using and exchanging for good and starting down these management skills, uh, but in a new uh, and innovative way with a sense of responsibility. They start with this um, 
Ganesh um, idea from the Indian students that is done by red solid idols with seed inside that is dissolved by water and from that is come out a plant. So from this, uh, they start thinking about what thing you can see here, the final product uh, that are like the piggy banks uh, that are done by red soil. And of course, the customer journey. They think that the most important thing is create awareness and talk about their community. Of course, uh, uh, having uh, their consideration on uh, the platform Kickstarter and their participation because crowdfunding it's really fundamental. So they need to feel part uh, of the project. And so also they create a wonderful storytelling and video talking about all the process behind of it. And uh, I will show you also through the business model that they engage also artisan and uh, a family from Milano for help them to the production. And the, the ethical value that there is behind of it, uh, the educational value, the responsibility and the life cycle. So they can see all the life cycle uh, of this uh, piggy bank. They can destroy it, uh, have it their dream, uh, planning for that uh, goods, and but also with the seed inside of it, see growing a new plant. So we are talking about life cycle. So participation. So um, having multi, but also contribute to something really important. So contribute to animal extinction. So donate part of the money to have a cause and receive the product to use. And of course, explain to their kids, to their family, the value of um, a responsible uh, design, a responsible game. So here they created, of course, this is a graphic simplification, but we have done all the financial part with the cost and price uh, and the launch to the market. You can see our bakers, uh, you can see the platform of Kickstarter, and you can see the group of these three students that created uh, this Matti. And uh, so how it's working, so that they will push, uh, they will have really strong storytelling, the product on Kickstarter, they receive the money um, from the bakers uh, and uh, and then uh, they have give some money of course of WWF uh, and then uh, of course they send Matti to them and the money back to them so this is something that's really an ecosystem that can really is feasible and durable and we present it uh, to the platform so sustainability is in the idea is in the business models and of course, it's also for the bakers. So it's a matter of education. And you can see here the page of Kickstarter that they want to launch. And you can see also an example of storytelling. So I want uh, to talk about uh, responsibility for some last sentences. And I want to talk about sustainability because every time that we think about design and solution, we say that we have a human-centered approach. That is true. Uh, we don't have any more uh, grounded approach. Uh, we think about our users, our persona. We conduct interview in a lot of disciplines, even in visual, in business. And uh, we try to understand the domain of the society. We try to cut new trends uh, and uh, also to educate. Uh, but we have to go from a human-centered approach to an earth-centered approach. And this is uh, uh, what we have to do as a designer together with our students. Uh, thinking about uh, this uh, <laughs> from an ego approach to an eco approach. And so when we think about responsibility, it's an eco in all sense. We are talking about business. We are talking about environment. We are talking about society. And uh, so an ethical approach between us, between the other, and uh, between the around us, so our environment. So our responsibility as designers, as educator, is inspire good behaviors uh, and push an environmental, social, economical revolution towards a collective responsibility. So thank you very much. And uh, I stay here if you have any kind of question. Thank you. Thank you so much for this incredible lecture, Elisa. Um, I'm gonna switch to Spanish in order to uh, uh, tell them to ask questions to you. Eh, chicos, antes de eh, 
eh, pasar a las preguntas, eh, vamos a ver un video eh, de una exalumna egresada. Y mientras escriben sus preguntas, cuando volvamos del video, yo las voy a leer para que eh, Elisa les responda. ¿Va? Hola, soy Charlotte Madrid y estudié Fashion Management en Domus Academy. Una de las cosas que más disfruté durante mis estudios fue el del aspecto de la colaboración, ya que Domus tiene una metodología colaborativa que te permite trabajar con personas de diferentes países y diferentes backgrounds y esto ayuda muchísimo a nutrir mi punto de vista y mi crecimiento como profesionista. Otro aspecto que admiro muchísimo de Domus son las oportunidades que te brinda y yo tuve la oportunidad de poder trabajar en Jux Netapo una de las e-commerce más grandes de moda en Italia y gracias a esta oportunidad me pude abrir camino en el mundo de la moda. Otro aspecto que admiro bastante es el intercambio cultural, ya que pude explorar y ampliar mi conocimiento a través de la cultura italiana que enriqueció muchísimo mi experiencia y mi estadía en Domus. Bueno, pues igual que Charlotte, que acaba de compartir su testimonio en video, ustedes también pueden formar parte de los egresados de Domus Academy. Y pues, eh, más que nada, si quieren información acerca de, de Domus Academy, pueden ingresar a la página de Encuentro Creativo en el apartado de becas, pueden obtener más información y en las redes oficiales de Domus Academy. Uh, so, <laughs> Elisa... We have tons of questions. There is over 200 people here uh, and they are all saying, thank you so much for this incredible lecture. Um, so everybody is saying different things, but let me read a yep. question by Samuel Evaristo. Yes. He says, could there be a suitable approach to gastronomy? Will it be possible to grow, to go through a vegan experience? What would you suggest for that? So we are working a lot with food. Uh, this is a true, not only because we are Italian for <laughs> sure, but uh, it's an important, this is an important approach to sustainability. Um, not, not only talking about, of course, food as a vegan one, but also regarding deliveries of food. Uh, you know that probably from uh, the latest years is really changing a lot the approach to um, the food uh, industries. Uh, we are having uh, several uh, workshops together with company here. We have work changing completely the, uh, and thinking out of the box. We had traditional Italian uh, uh, company. We have worked, for example, in the past with Danone or with Barilla, completely changing and try to give and work with new ingredients and proposing new communication campaign and launching new project product on the market. And um, also we are working with um, LifeGate, that is a network uh, and that is in the sustainability network here in Italy, talking about food, uh, but also with startup, with the students of business. And um, we are inviting uh, uh, business angels, startup uh, in, the, um, in the field of food, uh, try to explain to them uh, how to launch something good and make it uh, feasible. So that's the answer is yes, in the sense that uh, um, we are trying uh, to mix our competence and our student competence. And there are some of my students that also are interested in food in terms of uh, how uh, we can experiment, but also how we can deal and giving new message to the society. So yes, it's true. It's something that we have to investigate on. Great. And your answer, I think, filled every doubt we could have. Uh, so moving from food to fabric, yep. um, there is a question here for, from Irving Ramirez. And he says, if, uh, if you, you need tons of water, uh, you know, in the process of making uh, cotton fabrics and then synthetic fabrics and materials, uh, they are bad for the water. What is the best alternative uh, in terms of fashion? Hi. You know that there is a fashion revolution and uh, that I, there is my colleagues here of fashion design that are working a lot on that. 
there is a debate, a huge debate also of our students uh, during our thesis, we do round table here. We believe that the peer to peer discussion is fundamental in uh, postgraduate um, students because I had some students that come from product design that are specialized uh, in material and process and other students that come from fashion designs. And sometimes we say we need a digital revolution. You know, we are talking about a metaverse on NFT, digital um, dress, you can see also an influencer or we really need to start from the beginning so we are need to start from the process of creating something but i think that is also uh, the rule of brands the communication brands because they are part of in it because uh, uh, if uh, a lot of luxury brands uh, right now they are taking position a lot of fashion brands they are taking position if you know Stella McCartney collection then by plastic for sure uh, they are taking position uh, because they want to give a message they are in a position of giving a message you know what they are doing for example Patagonia that are giving <laughs> the action and they are giving their money for sustainability so I believe in action and I I believe that uh, the real sustainability, as you said, uh, is inside the production system uh, and try to understand uh, how we can change it, but also into the communication system and try as much as we can uh, to make understand that maybe something that even uh, uh, costs a little bit more is uh, help us to live better with our environment. So it's a double you know, work uh, that we have to do. Perfect. Regarding your previous answer, Samuel Evaristo says, thanks, as a chef, I was interested in that. So Me too. Uh, <laughs> I, I love cooking, uh, so I'm not a chef, but I am mean, really interesting too, also. Perfect. So Julia asked um, about the synthetic materials used in, you know, in design. The PU material, she says, do you know any process that can recycle uh, synthetic materials? So uh, I'm not a product designer, I'm a business designer and a visual designer, so I'm not really go through of it. We have a particular workshop here in Domus uh, that is advanced design processes with uh, Ahoy Azegawa, that is the program leader, and they are trying also to understand how to deal with uh, new material, new process. But as you have seen in a quick and easy way from the last project. Of course, here we are talking about um, Matti, so it's something that is really natural. But uh, is um, um, when we have to think about material, we have to think about uh, also a lot our persona, our user, and how to narrate it to them. So uh, something that I say also to the product designer that uh, come to my lecture in my master that are a little bit more strategic and communication oriented is um, when you want to create something new, try to find a way to tell it and present it. And, um, and because this dialogue is really fundamental because sometimes if you want to open a new startup uh, and you need funding of it, uh, it's important uh, to make it feasible and have a strong pitch. So if you want to do that, uh, ask me in the future, I'll try to help you <laughs> as best as we can. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, Paula Zavala asks, do you think there is a trade-off between sustainability and profit? The fashion brands such as Shane and other like fast fashion mm -hmm. companies will continue to be undefeatable? Mm. This is a huge debate about that. You can imagine. <laughs> there is huge debate, not only about Shane, but other brands, because yeah. every time that I bring example of sustainability, uh, we remember a lot of brands that are doing campaign and everybody says there are greenwashing, right? Okay, not only Shane. They said, okay, they're doing that in their communication campaign, but if you think about how they product this kind of things is not sustainable at all. So I think uh, that uh, uh, the sustainability comes from uh, the beginning. So from the process, from the business model and to be brave to change it. So there are some company that uh, can do that and other that probably are not really interested. Okay, but uh, your power is uh, to um, choose what is the right things. Perfect. I think we've covered most of the questions here. Yeah. We had over 200 people online the entire uh, webinar. So I think they are all very pleased with this lecture. 
And, you know, throughout the two weeks of Encuentro Creativo, we touch on different topics and sustainability and technology uh, within the creative field uh, was a huge part of it. And one will think that it will be very repetitive, but no, each uh, lecture was very different from one another. So we thank you so much for, for the information you brought because we learned uh, something new in each conversation. So thank you very much. <laughs> You're on mute, I guess. Now you can hear me. Yeah, yeah so yeah. thank you. Um, I'm really happy to share my, my lesson with you. And also, I, I hope uh, to see you in the future and uh, have another chance to talk with you. So thank you so much and um, see you soon. See, I'm going to give the mic to Claudia so yeah. she can close the session. But thank you so much. Gracias. Gracias. Nos vemos pronto. Gracias, bro. <laughs> Okay, perfect. Uh, thank you, Lisa. It was a really interesting session. And um, thanks to Domus Academy for helping us to coordinate this webinar for all the students that joined us this morning. Uh, I'm going to switch to Spanish in order to give the final messages, but it was a really interesting uh, session. Thanks so much, Lisa. De acuerdo. Bueno, pues muchas gracias a todos los que nos acompañaron a este webinar. A nombre de la Cámara de Comercio Italiano en México, les agradecemos por eh, haber formado parte de esta segunda edición. El día de hoy es el último día de actividades, nos quedan tres ponencias más. Entonces, igual los invitamos a que se unan a estas sesiones. Y eh, bueno, a nombre de la Cámara de Comercio Italiano en México, eh, les recuerdo que este es un proyecto llevado a cabo en colaboración con la Embajada de Italia en México y con otras marcas como lo son Estilo Luxótica, Natuzzi, Artemide, Bulgari, Amoretti Brothers, Ferrari, Alfa Park, Davide Gruppi, Benetton, Yamamai, Seña, Fernet Blanca, Smeg, Ferrero, Cartel y Orfe México. La siguiente semana estaremos llevando a cabo algunos giveaways eh, a través de las redes sociales de Encuentro Creativo, así que les pedimos de estar al pendiente para que bueno, puedan tener la oportunidad de ganar algunos de los premios eh, de las marcas italianas que tenemos disponibles para ustedes. Y también les recordamos de visitar la sección de becas en el sitio web de EncuentroCreativo.mx, ya que distintas universidades están ofreciendo becas a los alumnos que formen parte del 50% de las actividades de Encuentro Creativo. Las becas, hay algunas que tenemos entendido que vencen la siguiente semana, sin embargo nosotros estamos en comunicación con las universidades y justamente ellos van a tener por parte de nosotros la lista eh, pues de todo lo referente a los alumnos que cumplan con el 50% de asistencia. Sin embargo, los certificados se van a enviar a sus correos entre la segunda y tercera semana de noviembre. Así que les pedimos estar al pendiente, sobre todo de los correos que utilizaron o que registraron en los formatos que les pasamos para pase de lista. Muchas gracias por formar parte de Encuentro Creativo y nos vemos en la siguiente sesión. Hasta luego.